Okay, we're going to jump right into this. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how I use Fusion 360 to create templates and material lists for woodworking. I also use uh, Fusion uh, for leatherworking templates as well. Uh, but this is going to be, as you can see, a planter box that I designed for uh, my back patio. Uh, it's going to be made strictly out of uh, 2x4s. This is a very simple project. I just wanted something to start with to show you guys um, kind of a beginner way of using this program. Now, I'm not going to go into great depth, but I am uh, going to show you how I create something like this, or actually how I actually created this exact uh, design. So, first things first is you definitely want your grid on. That should always be on. And you, uh, in my case, I use parameters. Para parametric uh, modeling is one of the best things about Fusion 360 that is amazing. And what that means is you can, um, on the back end, if you will, of the measurements you're going to be using in your model, you can go back and change those at any time to make, say, this planter box uh, in lieu of two foot by two foot, you can make it four foot by four foot or whatever you desire. You can make it into maybe like a trough. So it's great. It's just great technology because you don't want to have to go back and type all this stuff back in. Trust me, that would be a nightmare. So we're going we're gonna to start there. And what I typically do is I take the material that I'm going to use. In this case, we're using two by fours. So it's going to be simply inch and a half by three and a half material. And I input that first. And then I start putting in uh, my design lengths. So let me show you what I'm referring to. So I would call this MAT for, well, sorry, got a cord in my way. MAT for material. Uh, so material uh, underscore, you can't use space in Fusion 360. So we would put a space or an underscore there. And then we would go straight into what this is, which this is going to be the depth of, let me do this, depth of the 2x4, which is an inch and a half, as you know, I hope, and the width is material of 2x4, that is, the width is going to be 3.5. I'll show you where this comes, into hand, in, comes in handy here in a minute. Uh, for the sides of the planter box, which will be these here, we're going to make this one, let's say 20 inches high. So we're gonna go in here to uh, perimeters again, and we are going to make the vertical, vertical sides, side height. And we're going to make that, let's say, 20 inches. Default into inches here in the U.S. on my Fusion 360 program. So for the top pieces, we have a short one and a long one. So we're going to call them, like we see them, a short and a long. But, you know, first I think what I'm going to do is do the bottom so let's do the bottom pieces first and I can kind of show you how these look here how I'm doing them they are inside I'm gonna be uh, probably pocket screwing this whole thing together because I have become addicted to the Craig pocket hole jig here lately so we're gonna make these 21 inches long and the reason I'm doing that is because whenever you get to the long side, it's you're gonna wanna you're gonna need that length. Um, I'll show you. Well, let me just show you. It's easier. But uh, so let's do. Uh, I thought my I thought it went away there. Anyway, okay. So we're gonna actually this is the material. We're gonna make these starred so they're right there on top. So for the bottom, 
we're going to there we go. I don't, I don't know what happened there. Let's do bottom length. We're gonna make these 21 inches for that. And for the short top pieces, let's do trim short. Let's make these, I think 19 maybe what I did. I may be changing those, which is good. If I can show you how to do that. And underscore trim long piece. We're going to do these at 22 and a half, so 22.5. And for now, let's just roll with that. And I will show you, hit OK here. I will show you what those are for if you don't already know. So the first thing you're going to want to do is create a sketch and you're gonna to want to put it on the plane that you choose typically I start on this vertical z-axis the blue line here but in this case I'm gonna start on the bottom so we're gonna pick the bottom red plane here and the first thing I would do is I'm gonna come off this plane I mean come off this axis a little bit and just probably start right here I can show you why later but I typically like doing that Anyway, so at least on some of these woodworking projects I do. Leatherworking, it's not as necessary to do that. But okay, so we're doing the bottom piece. So in okay, so in parametric modeling, this is where it's beautiful because if I didn't do that, I could do say 26 inches here, I could tab over and do 3.5 on the width of the 2x4, and that's fine. 26 inches long on the bottom. Again, the bottom being right here and that's great but I say someone wants a 40 or 50 inch base on their planter box well you would have to literally go back in and change all these and change all these and change all these and that would be a disaster so with parametric modeling you can go in here and just type in what you've already put on the back end if you will sorry for that noise uh, for the back end and we can put bottom so we already see there's the bottom it's already showing up so bottom enter well I don't know what's going on with my computer there we go so 21 inches which if you remember is what we did with our perimeters on the bottom so bottom length 22 inches and then 3.5 we don't want to leave this 3.5 because we want it to change too with everything should we need to um, and plus if you if you really wanted to do a clean planter if you will I would probably get the table saw and cut these down to precise precise uh, squared off pieces so you may want to manipulate this number too based on if you want to change these to say three inch pieces but in this case we're gonna leave them at the three and a half width which is right there so now what you would do is you would hit E for extrude or you could hit finish sketch but what this is going to do is allow you to convert this to 3d now I'm going to go fast on some of these things because this is not a complete crash course on fusion 360 or 3d modeling this is just how I use it for woodworking so anyway so this is uh, going to be one of our perimeters as well this is material depth of the 2x4 inch and a half and there we go and you can check that if you want just to see if that is in fact what you wanted and it is because you can click here and look down here at the bottom an inch and a half on that z-axis so we're good to go okay so now we have our first bottom piece so what I would typically do here first of all first things first these need to be changed uh, to components and what the reason for that is because Whenever you go to the very end, you can print this off into a material list and it'll, it'll break out each piece individually. So you'll know how many two by fours or plywood or you can do screws, whatever you would like, um, biscuits, whatever, to how many you would need. It's amazing technology. So for now, we're going to call this bottom because that's essentially all we need to do. I could put bottom 2x4, but in this case, the whole project is using 2x4, so it's not really necessary. But 
if, if I were doing a, say, a cabinet or something, I would probably change that up a little bit to, for a little bit more description, which you can always do in the back end as well. But moving on, so we're gonna go with the bottom piece here, and we are going to create a pattern, a rectangular pattern. Pattern on path, I use a lot in leatherworking templates. It's great for stitching, and I'll show you that as well in another video. But uh, the direction you pick is, in this case, gonna be this direction right here. And as you can see, the arrow is pointing the way we're going. Extent, we're not gonna use that. Right now, we're gonna use spacing. Uh, for what we need it for, this is what we need in lieu of the extent. I can go over that at a later video as well, if interested in the using the extent function. In this case, let's do 3.5 for each one. And actually, let's go in and use our perimeter. Uh, the material width is 3.5. Now, one thing I forgot to do there, let's redo that, is put in the second measurement. So back to pattern on a rectangle direction. We're gonna go this way. Uh, it's going to be spacing. You already have that over here. Uh, three, you now we're going to do material width. And I want to do four on the bottom here. That's what I had missed a minute ago. And let's see what else we have here that I'm missing. Oh, it's not on the object. The object I need is this and we don't want faces we want components very important always use components there we go hit enter so now uh, we have the four bottom pieces basically we just copy them into a straight line and I want to turn my origin back on so I can see that so that would that would be how I would typically start this project off now let me show you something in perimeters where the beauty is so right now we have these bottom pieces set bottom length at 21 inches well someone comes into your office and or your shop and says I want 44 inches well there you just saw it change so now they're all changing that is amazing you cannot imagine how handy that would be or you probably can because uh, that's just an amazing feature anyway so Let's go back to 21 on these for this one and hit home. Home will bring you back to this view. So here we're going to go to the front side and start a new sketch on this plane or these fronts if you will and start adding the sides. So we're going to go back to our rectangle tool and we're going to go up here make a rectangle, two sided rectangle how I have that set. Let's do material. Or actually, I'm sorry, side. We're now on the side pieces. Side height. Enter. And we would tab over to this one. This is going to be your material width of the 2x4, which is a 3.5. Hit enter again. And now you see that we line up perfect, perfectly. And we have a 2x4 starting to form. So we would hit E for extrude. Click on this. And we're going to bring this out material depth which is the inch and a half and there you have it now big thing here is this looks all fun and games and nice that you've completed the side but you actually don't want this because these are joined right here and you want these to be individual uh, components so you're gonna actually unclick join here and make these a new component and you're gonna go back to having just the one which seems kind of depressing, but uh, that's how it needs to be done, or how I do it anyway. And again, you would just click on this and do the same thing again, rinse and repeat. You're gonna do a pattern, a rectangular pattern. The direction you're gonna go is right here on this axis, and you're gonna do spacing. We already have that. We're gonna do four because we wanna match up four of these, so let's click that to four. And the distance for each one is the material width and there you go so there you have the first side now 
something else that's amazing about this program is working with these planes. I'll show you now how to do that. You would go to construct and make an offset plane. The first plane you're going to want to do is these are planes here again these yellow origin pieces here. So you would in this case pick one of these planes which is the outside and I clicked it twice by accident so let's redo that. This plane and this is basically saying how far do you want this to go. Where do you want this plane to stop? And again, what we're going to try and do is, or I guess I didn't say, we're going to actually mirror these onto the other side so that we don't have to do all of this work again. This makes life much easier and much faster. So we're going to make another plane on this one. Now we have a new plane. Now this is not all we need because this essentially doesn't help us at all until we do the next step, which is to make a mid-plane. So to make a midplane, you go back to construct down here to midplane, and we're going to pick again this plane, and we're going to pick this plane, and now we have one in the middle. This plane will be used a lot. These midplanes are just amazing. So uh, what I would do now is, and I, you know, you really want to name these two as you go. I, I see that I've missed this, and we're just going to call it side now and it automatically changes them all as you can see there because they're on the same path anyway so let's go in and click one of these at the bottom then hold shift and we we will be able to get all four of them and we're gonna go up here to mirror and we're gonna pick the plane that we're gonna mirror off of so four objects are selected they're all components we want that there they are they're in blues so which means they're selected the, uh, the plane we want to mirror is this one right here and then we see we have a problem so you can see that they are connected here. We want them on the other side like this. So this is an issue with where the plane is set. So let's go back here. I have the plane in the wrong spot. So let's go back and do another plane. So we're going to make an offset plane. Sometimes these planes mess with me. We're going to do it on this side. And then we are going to end it here. OK. And then we're going to go back here and do another mid plane from this plane and this plane. OK. Then we're going to shift click all of these like so. We're going to go up to mirror and pick that plane again that we just created, the new one. And there you go. So now. They're where they need to be, as you can see.